Hi guys, Ingenio HB here and welcome back to Derive. So in today's video, uh, we're going to discuss naman the chapter 11 which is a flywheel. Of course, nandito pa rin tayo sa machine design and this is a passport exam uh, sample problems and as usual before we proceed to answer those questions, konting review lang ng formulas muna. Okay? So flywheel, so ano nga bu uh, what's the definition of flywheel? So uh, flywheel is a rotating energy reservoir which absorbs energy from a power source during a portion of the operating cycle and delivers that stored energy as useful work during the other uh, during the other portion of the cycle. So as you can uh, as you read the definition, it's all about energy. So flywheel is an a rotating energy reservoir which absorbs energy from a power source. So ibig sabihin bi dalagi yan yung usapang energy. Of course, damay din dyan ang power at syempre yung dimensions nung flywheel. So actually, uh, in our college days, we have two basic types na dinidiscuss. Syempre maraming types ito. Pero the most basic types lang na dinidiscuss is the uh, solid flywheel and the rimmed flywheel. Pero sa usapang board exam, you know, laging rim, rimmed flywheel. So kagaya nung nasa picture. Okay? So this is a rim flywheel. Okay, so actually this is the rim. This is the wool rim. This is the hub. Ayan. And of course, ito 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Itong wala na to, ayan yung spokes or arms. So kada dimensions na to, itong T-rim, the thickness of the rim, D-rim, which is the rim diameter, of course, we have the speed here. And kapag nag-side view, makikita natin ang lapad or width ng rim. So, each of these parts has a contribution on the flywheel design. And later, we're going to uh, see kung ano nga ba yung mga formulas na yun. So, since flywheel is usapang energy, laging bida dyan, kung matatandaan nyo, during your college days, ay yung tiyatawag na kinetic energy. And of course, if, uh, if we have a change in kinetic energy, meron tayong formula na delta Ke is equal to one half times weight of the flywheel divided by gravity times B1 squared minus B2 squared. So what are those uh, terms? So W sub F is equal to weight of the flywheel. Our V1 or velocity is the maximum or the normal operating speed and B2 is the minimum operating speed. So in, pag, sina, uh, pag usapang flywheel, tandaan nyo uh, guys, uh, agad guys, kapag uh, board exam problem or quiz, lagi lang naman dalawa, it's either the maximum or the minimum operating speed. Okay, so kapag ang tanong naman is what is the kinetic energy at a maximum normal operating speed, don't use this delta Ke. Instead, just use the Ke is equal to one half weight over G times B1 squared. So kung Ke at point 2 naman, so this is point 1. So just use the, just use this and just replace the velocity by B sub 2. And of course, in order to, in order for you to memorize this quickly, no, I do not encourage uh, memorize, pero siyempre, as you review day by day, mapafamiliar ka sa formulas, you may use the Ke is equal to 1 half mb squared. Yan yung natutunan natin sa physics. So, etong m, alam naman natin na weight over gravity yan. So, that will become 1 half weight over gravity v squared. So, makikita nyo na the same yan. Nagking, nagkaroon lang to ng minus because of this delta or change in Ke. But if the question is at point 0.1 or point 0.2 or maximum minimum, don't use the B1 squared minus B2 squared. Just use Ke is equal to 1 half times weight over gravity times velocity squared. Okay? So, meron din tayong kinetic energy ulit, but in terms naman of moment of inertia. Okay, so ano na ba yung moment of inertia yan? So, ang I is equal to moment of inertia is equal to m k squared. So, delta Ke may be written as 1 half I times omega 1 squared minus omega 2 squared. 
So of course, this is uh, our moment of inertia, which is mk squared. Alam naman natin yan sa ating mechanics. Of course, hindi mawala ang contribution ng mass of the flywheel. Radius of gyration. This is actually K. No, everything R. Pag nilagay mo namang R dyan, that's the radius of gyration. But that's not, that's not the ano, radius of the flywheel. Bawa, given rim diameter is 5. Gamitin mo agad 2.5. No, may given na radius of gyration dyan. And of course, this omega represents the angular velocity. Okay, so yung unit analysis, mamaya natin pag-aralan guys sa dulo pag mismong nagsagot na ng problem. Okay, so in design, may, ginaga, may tiyatawag silang coefficient of fluctuation. Uh, uh, normal naman yan kung sa mga ibang elements ay coefficient of friction. So this is the coefficient of fluctuation. That is the ratio or simply the ratio of change in operating speed over average speed. So, this is maximum, minimum operating speed. Of course, tong B bar, yung may bar sa uh, itaas, that's the average or the mean speed uh, have this formula. In short, our CF is, ah, sama natin sulat. So, dito na lang. In short, our CF is B1 minus B2 over B1 plus B2 over 2. Or pwede rin na, na paglaroan mo lang yung problem, i-derive mo lang. So, V2 is equal also to V1 times 2 minus Cf over 2 plus Cf. O limbawa ang tinatanong kung V2 o V1 given ng Cf. So, no need to, uh, what you call that, no need to shift solve, di ba? Or shift solve may do, pero mas mahinang pa rin kung may alam kang derived formula. So, kaya na lang maglaro ng formula na to kung paano nag-come up dito. Pero that's another formula that I will introduce to use the coefficient of fluctuation. And ako naman tayo sa approximation formula for the rim weight. So, we have the weight of the rim here. We have the pi d m t rim b rim delta rim. And as you remembered on the first slide, I said that every part of the flywheel has a contribution no, sa problem. And eto na yun. So, ang weight daw ng rim is pi times mean diameter. T rim is the thickness of the rim. B rim is the width of the rim. And rho rim is equal to the density of the rim material. So, mandari lang tandaan, pi dt b delta. In order for you to memorize this no, or to be familiarized on this formula, we all know that weight is equal to density times volume. Okay, and we all know that the volume no nung nakikita natin figure kanina alam na natin na uh, it is uh, area times height so ang area noon is the y dt and of course the height is yung kapal which is the width of the rim so pwede mo siyang isulat na w is equal to pi dt b so this is your volume and this is your density so, ganun lang kadali. Hindi naman kailangan memories na pi dt, b rho. So, just uh, lahat na I derive from the basic equations sa physics or thermodynamics and whatsoever. Okay? So, we have also the energy required to punch a metal. We have the energy punching is equal to one half of the force times the thickness of the plate. So, para ka lang uh, karaniwan problem sa board exam kapag energy of the punching uh, Given ang shearing machine, which is uh, function is to punch the given plate with a given thickness, no, with a given force. And of course, uh, be the rin dyan yung uh, ultimate shear strength of the plate material. So, E punching is equal to one half times the shearing force times the thickness of the plate. So, what is that shearing force? F is equal to ultimate shear strength of plate material times the shearing area. Nagkataon kapag plate ang given at minsan uh, kadalasan ang given na pinapunch is circular. So we have the shearing area of the pi d which is the circumference times the thickness. Okay? So uh, minsan sa board exam problem uh, kapag walang sinabing punching basta or energy due to punching basta pag may nakita yung energy just equate it immediately. 
So, wala ibang pagkukawaan. And of course, we have a machinery's handbook formula here. Or pre, uh, pressure or force required to punch a hole. So, maraming tanong na ganyan sa board. No? And it just yes, simply diameter times thickness times 80. So, dapat ang diameter mo daw ay naka-inches. Ang thickness, ang thickness mo is naka-inches. So, just multiply it by 80 and your pressure force will be on tons. Maybe this is a constant no, from machinery's handbook. No, kapag minultiply mo rito, yan, yan, yan. So, maybe ito ay PSI, no? parang pounds in pounds per inches squared, tingin ko. Kaya kapag minultiply mo inches by inches, inches squared, cancel ito. And you will have a pounds that can be converted into tons. So, just my two cents of idea. No? Pero wag na natin, no? in order to avoid confusion. I just want to share, no? Uh, yung konting observation natin. Okay? So, ayun. Problem solving na pala tayo. So, a cast iron flywheel is rotated at speed of 1,200 RPM and ha having a mean uh, rim. That is not rim. Mean, uh, mean rim radius of 1 foot. If the weight of the rim is 30 pounds, what is the centrifugal force? So, as you remember on the previous slides, I don't discuss the centrifugal force, of course. Hindi man laging lahat sa uh, board exam problem pag nireview mo yung formula, ayun ang lalabas. We just need to remember the basics. And we all know that uh, solution. All right. And we all know that uh, centrifugal force is simply the mass of the flywheel. Or sabi natin wag mo ng flywheel. Way back on our physics days or mechanics days, we all know that centrifugal force is simply the product of mass times the normal acceleration. And we all know that mass times normal acceleration is equal to B squared over radius. So that was MB squared over R. Okay. So, isa-isa yun natin kung may mga given ba. So, sabi ka sa iron plow is rotated at speed of 1,200 RPM. Having a mean radius, sabi natin RM is equal to 1 foot. Sabi natin DM is equal to 2 feet. Okay. If the weight of the rim is 30 pounds, all right. What is the centrifugal force? So, walang given dito na direct na pwede natin gamitin. Okay. So, meron kahit paano itong uh, mean radius dito. Pero isa-isayin muna natin. So, we need to get the M and the B squared. But we all know that M is also simply weight is equal to mass times gravity. So, mass is equal to weight over gravity. So, we may write this as W over G times B squared over R. So we have the weight. So that was the 30 pounds. And we have this gravity, of course, in English unit as 32.2 feet per second squared. So kulang na lang natin si B squared. No, so that was... Lagay na natin dito. B squared, we all know that the velocity is equal to pi dn. So pi times 2 feet, ito yung diameter niya, 2 feet, and N is 1,200 RPM. Okay, so divide na natin by 60 para maging revolutions per second kasi nga naka-seconds lahat ito. So I'm going to... Yeah. So this will be feet. This will be per second. So... We are waiting for the answer as in feet per second. So 2 times pi times 1, 2 divided 60. So that was 1, 2, 5. 166 feet per second. So we may use this as 1, 2, 5.66 squared. I square na natin si feet squared. As feet per second. So that was feet per second squared. Feet squared per second squared rather. And we have this radius as one foot. So, ano-ano yung mga pwede natin i-cancel? 
So this is uh, magkatabi to. So feet per second squared times feet. So that was feet squared per second squared. So the same dito. So cancel. Second squared, cancel. At ang matitira ay pounds. Which is tama ang nasa multiple choice ay pounds. So that will become. So ayusin na nga natin dito. 30 times 125.66 squared divided by 32.2. And of course, this is one fourth. And the answer is so the answer is fourteen thousand seven hundred and twelve point forty five pounds. So the answer is obviously letter B. Okay, so na isa na tayo guys. So what pressure, second question, what pressure is required to punch a hole 2 inches diameter through a 1 fourth inch steel plate? So kanina, nasa panghuli ata itong formula na diniscuss ko. We all know that the pressure or force not to punch a hole is pressure or force is equal to D times T times AT. And our diameter and thickness should be in inches in order for us to get a pressure or force in tons. As kagaya ng nasa choices. So it will become, what is the diameter? Sabi, 2 inches. Times thickness, ang sabi, 1 fourth inches. And of course, constant of 80. So what kahit ninyo na i-calcule? 2 times 1 fourth, that was 1 half times 80. So that was 40 tons. Okay. All right. Okay, so that was the answer is letter D. So number three, what is determine the minimum operating speed if the coefficient of fluctuation is 0.12 and the maximum operating speed is 280 RPM. So in introduce natin kanina si CF as the average as the ratio of the difference of two velocities over the average, which is B1 plus B2 over 2. And since the question is looking for the minimum operating speed, meaning siya si B2. And kanina nag-introduce ako ng drive formula na B2 is equal to B1 times 2 minus CF over 2 plus CF. And if we are looking for the V2, we need to get the V1. So ang B1 daw is 280 RPM kasi sabi maximum operating speed. Eh, dalawa lang naman yan. Maximum, it's either maximum or the minimum. Of course, 2 minus CF, matik, 0.12, coefficient of fluctuation. Alright. So, para ka lang nag-minus ng CF sa 2 at nag-plus uh, dito sa ilalim. Okay. I'm going to erase this one. Okay, so, and 280. 2 minus 0 0.12 over 2 plus 0 0.12. So just multiply the 280 on that. So that was 248.3 RPM. So you may uh, you may use this also, guys. Pwede niya may ship solve. So yun nga, nagbigay lang ako ng derived formula para mas madali. Makatipid ng ilang segundo sa calc. So the answer is 248.3 RPM. Okay, so number four, a shearing machine requires 150 kg per kilogram meter of energy to shear a steel sheet and has a normal speed of 3 revolutions per second, slowing down to 2.8 revolutions per second during the shearing process. The ply wheel has a mean diameter of 75 cm and weighs 0 0.018 kg per cubic cm. The width of the rim is 30 cm. If the hub and arms of the flywheel account for 15% of its total weight, find the thickness of the rim. So the question is looking for the thickness of the rim and the only formula that contains the thickness of the rim is the weight of the rim is equal to pi diameter, mean diameter, and the thickness of the rim times the width of the rim times the density of the material. Material. Ayan. 
So, isa-isa yun natin to kung may mga given. So, sabi ng the weed of the rim, ito yung unang umano sa mata ko ngayon, the weed of the rim is 30 cm. Ayan, 30 cm. At kanina may nakita akong waste, 0.018 kg per cubic centimeter, kahit walang sinabing density matic, nakita mo yung unit na kg over cubic meter per cm. So that was 0.018 kg per cubic centimeter. So check na to, check na to. Of course, this is constant. So we're going to look for the mean diameter. May given ba? Ang sabi kanina, the flywheel has a mean diameter of 75 cm. So this is in 75 cm. So yun, thickness of the rim ang nawawala. So we need to find this weight of the rim in order for us to get the thickness of the rim. And please see that the... The, the properties has a unit of cm and cm here. So expect that theorem will be in centimeter and answer kagaya ng nasa choices. Basta ang weight of the rim na ipopokol mo is should be in kilograms. Okay? So tara, hanapin na natin yung weight of the rim. Paano nga muna ba natin mahanap yung weight of the rim? We all know that the weight of the rim ay pwede natin makuha sa weight of the flyweight. Hindi ko alam kung na-discuss ko ito kanina pero... This is another formula which is sabi, weight of the flywheel is equal to the weight of the rim plus the weight of the hub and the arms. Okay? So, nakamutang ko lang kanina ipaskill yan pero meron tayong ganyang formula na ang buong flywheel ay composed ng weight or bigat ng rim plus weight ng hub and arms. Okay? Yan yung mga spokes or arms kanina. Na? inano natin. Okay, so drawing ko na nga. So kunyari yan yung bilog. Grabe naman bilog yan. Yeah. So kunyari yan yung flywheel. Meron ka ritong uh, hard hub, hard hub. <laughs> so ayan siya, yun yung thickness. Yeah, kunyari bilog. Yeah. Ayan. Kaya, of course, this is the wool flywheel. So, that was the wool flywheel is equal to weight of the rim. So, this is your rim. Ayan. And weight of the hub and arm. So, this is your hub. And, of course, this is your arm. So, that was the total weight of the flywheel. Diyan natin kukunin yung weight of the rim. Pero, kailangan given din si weight of the flywheel plus weight of the hub and arms. Pero, kanina sa huling statement, if the hub and arms of the flywheel account for 50% of its total weight, that's total weight is the weight of the flywheel, find the thickness of the rim. So we may simplify this by para ma-eliminate na si weight of the hub and arms. So that was one wool, one, uh, one wool weight of the flywheel minus 0.15 weight of the flywheel. So that was 0 0.85 weight of the flywheel is equal to weight of the rim. So, kailangan natin makuha si weight of the flywheel. Multiply natin yung 0.85 in order po as na makarating kay weight of the rim. So, matrabaho to pero kung makinig lang mabuti at intindihin. So, we need to get this weight of the flywheel. So, saan natin kukunin? Notice that hindi pa natin nagagalaw yung details sa taas. The first uh, statement. So, we all know that the energy requires 150 kilogram Meter. So, pwede natin sabihin siya na si delta KE. Why? Kasi may given tayong dalawang speed, which is the 3 revolutions per second, which is the maximum, obviously, and the minimum is 2.8 revolutions per second. But first, I, I will write the formula. So, that was delta KE is equal to 1 half times weight of the flywheel times gravity times B1 squared minus B2 squared. So, saan natin kukunin si delta KE? We all know that a shearing machine requires 150 kilogram meter. Hindi lang siya nasa newton meter pero it is the same as energy. Okay, so mabuting dito natin gawin ang unit analysis. So the delta KE. So sabi this is uh, 150 kilogram meter. So kunin man natin pala yung B1 and B2. 
So B1 is, we all know that is pi dn. Sige na, maliit na nga yung sulat ko. Parang yun na maliit ko. So pi dn1. And we all know that the diameter is in 30 cm. But we need to convert it on meter first kasi nga nakameters itong nasa uh, left side natin na equation. And we all know that dm, 30 cm is equal to 0.3 meters. So just divided by 100. So that will become pi times 0.3 meters times 3 rem per second. So matik yan. Kapag uh, rem per second to or rem per minute, tapos may multiply mo sa meter, matik yun, meters per minute or meters per second. So that will become 2.83 meters per second. And si B2 naman, pwede mo namang, uh, sige, wag na. Parang di nakakil ito. So pi dn2 is equal to pi times 0.3 times 2.8 is equal to, yung sagot ko kanina, divide ko lang ng 3 times 2.8 natin. Oh, teka na, wala. <laughs> so 0.3 times pi times 2.8, so that will become 2.64. Tama ba? Ah, no, no. This is uh, this is without the rim. Sorry, sorry. This this should be the diameter. So it should be. Burain ko lang to. Bang again. No? <laughs> so seventy five cm is equal to point seventy five meters. So yes, replace this. Ah no 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 no. This one. This one. This one. Okay. So that was point seventy five. So this is three. 0.75. This is 2.8. So that will become. Sorry, guys. The tongue now. 0.75 times 3 times 5. That was 7.07. Okay. So B2, just divide your 7.07 .07 by 3 and multiply by 2.8. Kasi common na si pi at si 0.75. So that was 6.6 .6 meters per second. Okay, so everything is settled by here. Yes, of course, we can get the weight of the flywheel. So dito, lagay na natin yan dito. So that will become 150 kilogram meter is equal to 1 half times WF times 9, uh, divide by 9.81 meters per second squared. We should get the weight of the flywheel here as kilograms kasi nga para dito. And times 7.07 .07 squared na natin, minus 6.6 .6 squared, meter squared per second squared. And as you can see, pwede na tayo mag-cancel ng isa dito. So this is second squared, second squared, this is squared, this is meter, so may matitirang meters dito. And syempre, pwede natin cancel meters to meters, ang matitira is kilogram as we expected. So, WF is equal to uh, 150 times 2 times 9.81 divided by 7.07 .07 squared minus 6.6 .6 squared. So, the answer is 458.06 kilograms. At hindi yan dyan natatapos kasi meron pa tayo dito. Weight of the rim is 0.85 ng weight of the flywheel. So, times mo lang ang 0.85 and that will become 389.35 kilograms. So, ayan, salpak na lang natin dito. Dito na natin lagay. So, 398.35 so everything is settled now on its unit analysis. We don't need to repeat this. Now in order for us to save space, so pi is 75 times thickness times 30 times 0 0.018. So our thickness will be 398.35 divided by divide 75 divide 30 by 0 0.018 and the answer is 3.06 cm. 
And obviously, the choices are in wool number. Dito tayo sa nearest, which is 3 centimeter. So the answer is letter D. So pwede mo namang ilok spam. But I'm not, uh, syempre hindi ko naman masyadi na encourage yun. Pero kung nakita mong ganyan ang given sa board exam, why not? Pero ingat lang, isa lang dyan magbago, apektado lahat ng equation. So dabi ba naman ng pinagdaanan natin bago makarating sa thickness of the ring. So just may uh, two cents, no? Anyway, so di ako tayo sa second to the last question. The shear strength of a plate is 300 megapascal. Calculate the energy in kilonewton meter required to punch a 40 mm diameter hole in a plate 7 millimeter thick. So the question is asking for the shear strength, uh, for the energy no, required to punch. And we all know, no, may sinulat ako kanina ng E, punch, is equal to the half of the product of force times thickness of the plate. And in order for us to get the energy punch, kailangan makuha muna natin si F, which is equal to SUS times AS. Para hindi ka malito, alam mo naman natin na Stress is equal to force over area. So just cross multiply force is equal to area times stress. So this is the area. This is the stress. At ano nga ba muna given na SUS? So the shear strength of a plate daw is 300 megapascals or 300 newton per mm squared times stress area. We all know nakapag planche ang given or plate. Planche ang Tagalog ng plate sa, uh, sa industry so, hindi pinggan. So, that was plancha times stress area. We all know that the stress area for a circle is just the circumference of the circle times the thickness of the blade. So, that was pi dt. So that, was, uh, that was pi times d, which is 40 mm diameter ang nakalagay. Okay, papunta na tayo ng ano dyan. Ah. 40 mm times the thickness of the plate, which is 7 mm. So cancel, cancel, cancel. So our answer in Newton. So that was 300 times pi times 40 times 7. So that was 263,893.78 Newtons. So meron tayong F dito. So, thickness of the plate is 7 mm. So, ayan, energy is equal to 1 half times 263,893.78 newtons times the thickness of the plate, which is 7 mm. Na wala yung tinta. Yan. Which is 7 mm. And of course, the choice is in kilonewton meter. Rekta na natin dito. We all know that every uh, kilonewton, there's 1,000 newton. And we have this 1,000 mm. Ang pangit ng sulat ko. 1,000 mm is the 1 meter. So, kilonewton meter. So, cancel si newtons, cancel si millimeter. Okay? So, para mas matipid kayo ng space, guys, we all know that 1,000 times 1,000 is 10 raised to 6. No? And yun lang, konting idea lang. So, that will become 1 half. 1 half times the answer mo kanina, dun sa force, times 7, divided by 10 raised to 6, and the answer is 0. 0.92 kilonewton meter. And obviously, pinakamalapit is letter D, 0. 0.9 kilonewton meter. So the answer is letter D. Okay, for the last question, a flywheel weighing 910 kilograms has a radius of gyration of 1524 mm. The shop journals are 304.8 mm in diameter and have a coefficient of friction of 0.06. After the wheel reaches 120 rpm, 
the driving force is withdrawn and the wheel slows to 60 RPM. How much energy does the wheel lose? So this is obviously a, uh, it's a moment of inertia energy problem. And we all know, no, way back on the first slide, or tama ba? I think that was second slide. <laughs> so that was Ke is equal to one half m b squared or tawagin, one half wf over g b1 squared minus b2 squared pero pwede rin siyang one half times the moment of inertia which is m times radius of gyration squared times omega 1 squared minus omega 2 squared. Okay, so sabi how much energy does the wheel loss? Ibig sabihin, there's a change in energy kasi nga may nawala. Meaning, tama itong sinulat natin na delta Ke. Ang atin lang, kailangan makuha natin ang each of these terms, which is this is the mass of the flywheel. Meron ba tayong given? So, okay, we have this 910 kilograms. So, 910 kilograms. And we have the radius of gyration. We have the radius of gyration of 1524 mm. So, in meters na natin siya. So, that was 1.524 meters squared. So, squared na natin. Ayan. Times omega squared minus omega 2 squared. So, we need to find first the omega 1 and the omega 2. And obviously, dalawa lang naman uli yan. It's either the 120 and the 60 RPM. So, ibukod natin. Okay. So, since this uh, omega, hindi siya katulad ng velocity na pi dn. Okay. But of course, we should convert the revolutions into pi rad. Okay. So, omega 1, obviously, that was the biggest or the bigger, which is 120 revolutions per minute. Okay, so we all know that in one revolution, there is a 2 pi rad. Okay, and every minute, we have the 60 seconds. But ko kailangan i-convert sa seconds? Kasi ang compose ng gravity, di ba, may meters per second squared yan. Kasi we all know that 1 newton is equal to 1 kilogram meters per second squared. So, kailangan natin ng second. So, just convert it directly into rad per second. So, that was 120 times 2 pi divided 60. So, that was 12.57 rad per second. And our omega 2, since the factor is pare-pareho naman, magkakaiba lang dito sa 120. So you may use the 12.57, divide mo lang ng 120, times mo lang ng 60. So that will be the answer. So that was, of course, mga hati. So that was 6.28 rad per second. So salpak na lang natin dito. So that will become 12.57 squared minus 6.28 squared rad per rad squared per second squared. Of course, this rad squared is unitless. So that will become kilogram meter squared per second squared. And pwede natin sabihin kilogram meter per second squared times meter. And it will become kilogram meter per second squared is equal to Newton, as I said earlier. So that will become Newton meter. Ayan. So you will just going to one, oh, divide the answer in 1000 in order for us to get the kilonewton meter in choices. So balik tayo dito so that will become 1 half times 910 times 1.524 squared just don't forget the squared on the 1.524 times 12.57 squared minus 6.28 squared the answer is 125,298 na natin. Newton meter. So, nakikita mo na ba? <laughs> so, nakikita mo na ba ang answer? So, kitang-kita naman. So, just divide it by 1,000. No need to write the conversion. So, that will become 125.3 
kilonewton meter, which is obviously nasa letter A. Ayun guys, yun lang ang para sa flywheel. Salamat sa pakikinig. And if you have questions, please pwede mo naman akong i-message sa ating pledge. And nga pala, just a little favor, please do like our page no, dun sa description. And please subscribe to my channel for more videos. No, hindi lang sa machine design, kundi sa engineering, mathematics, sa pipe, at kung saan pa tayo pwedeng makapag-ambag. Again, thank you for listening. This is Engineer HB and see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.